So I just wanted to ask uh, one last question. So if we're all on the same page about how this is, this is not about abortion, this is about, um, for us, this is about protecting young women, this is about equal rights, not separate rights. Who, who is behind these series of attacks that keep coming down um, year after year, that take us away from the daily work of, of really building the leadership of, of our people? <laughs> okay, um, Prop 4, um, which was formerly Prop 73 and Prop 85, um, was put on the ballot by a group of young, or excuse me, a group of men from San Diego and Orange County. Um, excuse me, sorry. And basically what they have done is they have paid young people, um, probably people who look nice like myself, to go out and collect signatures. <laughs> That's right. To go out and collect signatures. And what they did was they um, asked them to get, they, get, they gave them more money um, based on the type of signatures they collected. So in order to get um, the parental notification law back on the ballot, um, the, the people who were out there collecting signatures received $17 per signature, while the other ones were only $5. So obviously, if you're a college student, that is an incentive for you to get this Prop 4 initiative signed by every single person you meet, regardless if you have to be deceptive or dishonest about what this law will really do to our families. Um, and so that is how we see this again. They have funneled a lot of money into this campaign. Um, it is an anti-abortion group. Um, not to say that this really is about abortion, but just to say that that is the, the motive that they have behind this. Um, but in addition to that, I think their real motive, if it was really to protect teens, and this is my, um, my honest opinion, if it was really to protect teens, they would have put this money, all this money, into education programs, into services, into all these things that we really do need in our community in terms of health and care services um, to stop teen pregnancy and to stop it at the root, uh, not to wait until after the fact to say, oh, wait, this is a problem. Thank you. Um, one other thing to keep in mind um, is that whatever happens in California um, is absolutely um, an indicator of what's going to happen in the rest of the country. Absolutely. So folks um, who are behind these, these propositions, it's not just on their own. You know, mm -hmm. It's part of a national strategy to really break apart our communities and to harm, our, to harm communities of color, um, and in particular to, to take away our rights and to take away our human rights and reproductive justice. And so um, it is very important, um, you know, it's urgent for our families here in California, um, but if, this w if any of these were to pass, it would affect everybody across the country. And so, um, you know, it's, 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 and when you add that to all of the other attacks that are happening with our laws, with cutbacks to, you know, all of the programs that, that we care about, social and health programs, mm -hmm. um, in, our, in our state budget and our federal budget, you know, it, it, it's all just amplifying ways that our communities are being harmed. And so we need to, that's another reason why our communities need to fight back. Mm. Thank you. So any last words, Suli and Adrian? Um, yeah, I guess I, I wanted to, you know, bring up that for, uh, you know, for us, gay marriage is, you know, right now is, is one of the fights that we're waging. But, you know, because uh, people are forcing that on us, you know, it's something that we already won. We didn't have to go through this fight again. And even as we were going through this fight, um, we also, you know, found out that in Connecticut, the Supreme Court over there um, legalized uh, same-sex marriage. Yeah. So, you know, it's like now you have three states mm -hmm. in the U.S. And I think, you know, it's becoming a trend. Lambda Legal right now is also uh, uh, in a legal case in Iowa for marriage. And on the lower courts, we already won it, and now we're in the appellate court. And so I think it looks promising, you know, especially if we win here, and the fact that we just won Connecticut, it's gonna look very promising for Iowa. You know, again, another place that people may not expect it, but, you know, there's a trend of people seeing, um, and I think by winning this fight, we can also one day hope to have, you know, federal protection for employment. You know, uh, gay and lesbian people can still be legally fired in over 30 states in the U.S. Wow. Um, you know, if we have federal, um, if we can eliminate DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, mm -hmm. uh, people who get married may also then be able to immigrate their partner if they mm -hmm. do not have, you know, U.S. citizenship. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, uh, in a lot of states, people, uh, even though they're in domestic partnerships and such, they still can't 
adopt a child between uh, both couples, mm -hmm. even though they don't have second parent adoption. It's mm -hmm. not legal. So, you know, through marriage, it's a fight that we're winning to push all of these rights forward. And I also wanted to, you know, kind of bring, you know, some of the historical analysis that we're, uni that we're using in all of these cases would not be possible without the um, uh, Loving versus Virginia, which was, you know, the case that was able to overturn um, a ban on interracial marriage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that was a, a huge, without that legal case, we would not be able to argue the cases that we're arguing right now, mm -hmm. you know, and so I think it's important to, to think of that, that there were times, you know, when people were not allowed to marry, uh, you know, if they were from different races. And I would like to um, add something to that as well, um, because this is something that I think is very important. I think the attacks and the proponents, um, again, are just giving us so much false information and, and being very deceptive in their ads and their advertisements. Um, in addition to what I said about Prop 4, which is that it does not protect children from sexual predators, um, gay marriage does not make, mean that teachers are going to teach second, year, second graders about gay marriage. Um, teachers are not entitled to teach about marriage in California, period. Um, and I do know that the Teachers Association is in support of no on Prop 4 and no on Prop 8, and that's because they realize it has nothing to do with the education system whatsoever, and they understand that their role does not change. And you've also seen a lot of pastors and, and reverends come forward from very um, big churches in Los Angeles specifically um, who are letting us know that, you know what, Prop 8 has nothing to do with churches. It's not going to make your pastors responsible for marrying people that they do not want to marry. Um, it's not going to change your church system. All it is is really giving civil liberties, extending them to all of our population, not just people who think that they deserve it. And, that, and that's really the, the reality of this. It's not about your morality. They're not going to change your morality. It's not going to change the education system. All it's going to do is give the same rights that you have to every single other person in this, in this state. Thank you, Ramit. So with that said, um, we are, I'm going to wrap us up. Thank you so much to our guests for coming on, on to Wednesday mornings with the Bus Riders Union. And you can visit www.noonthesix.org for today's show and more information um, on the amazing organizations that um, joined us today. So thank you and we're signing off. <laughs>